So uh, I wanted, you know, I was interested in grappling. I started uh, in 94. I happened to be at the uh, UFC 2 in Denver at Mammoth Gardens, uh, which is no longer Mammoth Gardens, but it was the venue. Anyway, uh, it was amazing to me, man. It changed my life. I was like, holy shit, what the hell is this? This little skinny dude beating up these big dudes. I, I got to learn that. And, uh, but I never felt comfortable just like laying on my back or, you know, I was more of an active, I had done wrestling as in peewees and stuff. And I just, I did, I preferred a more of a wrestling approach, but there wasn't really anything to do with that in the grappling scene. Um, and when Sakuraba came around, it was like this second epiphany I had, like, holy crap, what is that? I need to figure that out. So I kind of went down the rabbit hole. Everything kept leading me back to, uh, two names, Carl Gotch and, and Billy Robinson. And so, man, I just zigged while everybody else was zagging. I sought those guys out and I picked their brains and I tried to learn and model everything that I possibly could from their expertise. And I began to, I began to kind of put it together into a curriculum, but I was like, you know, this is probably around 2000. Uh, I first met Carl, talked, started talking to Carl in 2004. I had the idea in like 2003 and I was like, you know, I'm obsessed with this, it's fascinating, man. Pro wrestling used to be real like the UFC and not this like, you know, bodybuilders and tights acting. So I was like, okay, what is this? Cause this is something I could be into. So I started looking into it and that was catch as catch can wrestling. And uh, I figured, man, I cannot be alone. I knew that if I was like nerding out for this, there had to be a bigger market for it. So um, originally it started off, like I was collecting all the old manuals and uh, I had like a whole library, like what I gave you for your birthday, his birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday to coach. Uh, I gave him an old Frank Gotch book, but I had all these books and I was like, you know what? These things are expensive as shit. I'm gonna make some of my money back. I'm gonna be able to write it off. So I just incorporated a company so I could write off these books. And then I was like, okay, I'll just see her with a scanner one weekend. And I scanned like thousands and thousands of pages. And next thing you know, I put it into a book and it sold. And there was, I was right, there was a big market for it. So then I was like, I'm gonna expand out of books. I'm gonna go into instructionals. And I found Fujiwara's uh, Submission Master DVD and brokered the deal with Fujiwara. That blew up. When that blew up, I was like, I'm gonna fly Fujiwara out. Now I'm gonna do a seminar. And I flew his ass out from Japan and it like blew people's minds. And that, was, that happened because I ended up reaching out to Carl, writing him a letter and surprisingly he responded. And so I was kind of, they didn't have, they didn't call it this then, but now there's a name for it. It was like remote coaching. Like he was in Tampa and I'm in uh, LA. And so I started a club and I'd call him and ask him, what do I do and how do I run a club like this? I mean, I've done grappling, but not this. I want to do it this way, the way you do it. And so that's how we ended up jointly coming up with the King of Catch Wrestling Rules, which I launched in 2007, a few years later. Um, and, um, and it's still going today. I mean, now Gil, Gil ran a uh, King of Catch here in Arizona. Uh, so, I mean, man, it's been like 15 years or more and it's still going, which is great. And, and all the other uh, groups now that are not scientific wrestling um, have started their own tournaments. And a lot of them are based off of either our rule set or just the idea of actually let's get competitive catch going. So I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to be the one that kind of got it rolling as well. So the curriculum was really born um, from scientific wrestling was born of Carl Gotch, Billy Robinson, some Gene LaBelle, uh, a little bit of Dick Cardinal, uh, some Fujiwara, the guys that I trained with and tried to really seriously model. So uh, maybe I should take my sunglasses off when I answer this question. <laughs> I put them on because I thought I would look more cool, plus I can like hide behind the shades, <laughs> but I feel like maybe it's a too impersonal, I don't know. <laughs> You guys have an opinion on this? No, I, th I, I think you should them. rock them, man. I say keep them, dude. All right, they're staying on. <laughs> so uh, it's his gimmick. It's his pro wrestling gimmick. Oh, I'll, I'll pull my hair down in a minute, and then <laughs> if a tear starts rolling down, take them off and win the Oscar, <laughs> yeah, man. Right, yeah. So um, no, like uh, man, I had a guy. Uh, I I was already a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I started that in like 1995, and uh, one of the guys that's trained with me that even earned a black belt from me now a few years ago he was a blue belt and he went out to the first billy robinson or he was the first one from my group that went out to the billy robinson camp and um i had seen catch wrestling like i had uh seen um 
DVDs that had been marketed like in the late 90s and instructionals and stuff is out there and I wasn't impressed and I had no interest in it and I thought there wasn't really much uh, that I thought was special about it. Hopefully I don't offend too many people by saying that, but uh, that's what I felt. He came back from the Billy Robinson camp and he was showing me stuff that I had learned when I was a wrestler in high school, but it was like he was teach, showing me something I'd already learned, but he was doing it better than the way I was taught it. And I recognized that right away. And, uh, and he was like, you gotta go, you gotta go. This, this old man, he's like, walks around with a cane. You have to make yourself into a table. And then he climbs down on the ground to show you something. <laughs> and he's got this style of wrestling that like, I, no, no one's ever seen it. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. So I went to the next one and immediately I could tell that Billy was special. And that's when I knew, I was like, I have to learn everything I can from him while he's here. And so that's what I did. And I did everything I could to make sure I went to every single clinic, seminar, uh, two tours with them over to Europe. There were times when uh, Jake would bring him out two days before the camps and we would, and I went, showed up early, trained for two days straight. Uh, one time it was just me, uh, Billy and uh, uh, Harry just training. Harry Smith. Harry Smith. And we trained two days, just me, Billy, and Harry with Billy. And then Harry had to go, and then we did the camp. And so that's it. And so the only re catch wrestling, the only style that I learned that I know is the Billy Robinson style. And uh, and that's where, where I guess I'm involved after Billy Robinson died. Uh, I... Don't, I didn't have any interest really in, in being a guru or anything like that, but I, I was interested in passing along what I learned from Billy, but I really didn't care, only to the people that I feel like sincerely wanted to learn it. And uh, that's basically it. And then, so Jake has kind of just kept me going to these uh, camps and, and coaching and stuff. And otherwise, I'm a full-time illustrator and that's my, my predominant, uh, profession and my craft and if Jake wasn't having me come to these um, then I don't know I'd probably just be teaching the few very few select people that would have found me that's pretty much it yeah I mean the thing the thing is is um, we were really luck lucky man because you know Billy chose scientific wrestling and Carl Gotch chose scientific wrestling uh, Dick Cardinal, Fujiwara, like these guys, that means a lot to me, you know what I mean? So, I feel like it kind of almost like a, it's not a burden, it's a blessing, but like I do feel like a duty, that's the word that I was looking for, it's more of like a duty to continue what they kind of put on me a little bit here and to keep promoting the style and as a sport, you know, the sport of professional wrestling, catch as catch can. And so the whole idea with scientific wrestling, you know, is like, you know, there's all kinds of jujitsu. There's Gracie, there's 10th Planet, yada, yada, yada. Guess what? This is the same with catch wrestling. We do scientific wrestling. And what that means is that we only seek out the very best to learn from. So we've had Wade, we've had uh, Wade Chalice, who is literally the best wrestler uh, in terms of his documented history, um, Wade Chalice, Josh Barnett. We've really done our best to work with the top of the food chain in this field and codify and uh, canonize the information and then be able to present it in such a way that other people um, can really absorb it. So um, it's really cool because Sam, I mean, I, I kind of keep him going, but you know, Billy was like family to me, I named my youngest kid after him. Like, I mean, in his book, he called me and my wife family and stuff. Like, we were really close. And when he passed away, man, I pretty much was like, gonna quit. And it was Sam who was like, no, dude, come on. You know, Billy would want you to get going. And I kind of got over my little pity party and figured it out. And now I'm like, you know what? You're fucking right. But I also had to call on Sam because, you know, I was, I was working with Billy for uh, since the very beginning, January 2007. And man, like, it's gotten to be kind of like legendary or tales of like how rough he was. Um, 
but it was it's different to, it's funny to watch about it watch it on videos and laugh about it and hear stories but man it was a lot of fucking pressure <laughs> a lot of pressure to have this like really sadistic dude with a cane and then you're in front of a bunch of like black belts that doubt that this shit is fucking real and then you got to do it <laughs> and so it was a tremendous amount of pressure and um you know i ended up realizing man this thing is like way fucking bigger than me i need to start bringing some more people in and sam was the first guy uh he really just was a high level grappler so he got it like he understood the value of what was happening here and he fucking just showed up to every camp so i mean i'm the guy who spent the most time and the longest like just working with him uh here in the united states and uh but dude sam really dedicated himself. And we've got a handful of other guys, uh, Jesse uh, and Luis and another guy named Ricky who did spend a lot of time. That core group of guys, we really did our best to, to um, model Billy and, and pick his brain. Uh, and man, we got called everything from like fuckers to bloody idiots and poked with the cane, <laughs> everything else. So we don't do that to you guys. We, we, we save you guys from all that torture and just leave it to the pure cat. I do that to my guys though. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's the sadist. I'll fucking kick him. Well, I had already uh, been doing cat wrestling for a number of years. Actually, I started when I was a uh, blue belt in jiu-jitsu uh, with a, a retired pro wrestler named CC Star. And it was like, uh, when he was trying to teach me Catch wrestling is like trying to give a cat a bath, you know. I was like fucking scratching and hissing the whole time, like fucking super not with it. Um, but he told me to just stick with it, keep looking for it. And then finally, uh, when when catch wrestling made its way to Arizona through other organizations, he's like, you need to do this or else, you know. And uh, I don't have a lot of respect for CC as a mentor and as a friend, so um, I did it as a favor to him. And the bug bit me right away. Um, luckily for me. He prepared me well enough to where I, when I entered this initial camp, I, I kind of stuck out uh, compared to, I mean, it was a room of 50 people, and I was the only one there who really looked like I knew what I was doing. And so I got the attention of the coaches pretty quickly. Um, and then through their organization, I was able to find uh, other organizations, and I kind of branched out and really was just trying to put my hands in every pot I could to find out, like, where where is the purest source of, of catch wrestling I could find. And then uh, what, what wasn't explained to me is that my previous coaches had all gotten their start with scientific wrestling. And once I found that out, then the decision was easy for me. Hey, I'm gonna go to the source. And uh, I did that a couple of years ago and I haven't turned back. So th it was pretty simple. I just followed the trail of crumbs until I found the gingerbread house, man. <laughs> Uh, one was that uh, jiu-jitsu in the United States, jiu-jitsu was first. They had the UFC, the UFC was huge. That put Brazilian jiu-jitsu on the mat and it exploded. Another one is that it's, um, a, a, it can be less friendly to what I call retail martial arts, meaning uh, people it, it, that are, just do, do martial arts as a hobby, as a, as, you know, some people go play racquetball a couple times a week. Some people go do jujitsu a couple times a week. Catch wrestling is, it, it can be practiced and it can be interpreted a, a, a lot more violent and, and a lot more painful than jujitsu. Jujitsu is known as, you know, Josh Barnett made the quote that jujitsu is known as the gentle art and catch wrestling is known as the violent art. And there is truth to that. But also what's misunderstood is that the style of catch wrestling as Billy Robinson taught it was actually very much more akin to jujitsu than most people realize and than I realize because I was walking around as a black belt in jujitsu and uh, everybody that explained catch wrestling to me before I had met Billy was like, well, catch wrestling is submissions before positions. And that's way far from the truth. And uh, everything is established positionally first in the Billy Robinson style. Your position starts from your feet, from your stand-up wrestling. And getting good position from the stand-up wrestling before you're even on the ground, before you even get to the submission. So position was imperative. But the other thing was with the Billy style, he came from a style of wrestling where matches could last hours. 
And so he had to conserve energy and be able to draw the thing out as long as possible. So he wasn't doing the collegiate style of wrestling where you're doing level changes and penetration steps and low shots and things like that. And in fact, if he saw you doing that stuff, he would offend him. He'd be angry. He would, he wanted to see was, it was more of an upper body style of wrestling where you could grab the legs, but you're always grabbing the legs from a clench position, from a very close position. And he wanted everything done with complete efficiency, as economical as possible, so that in your mind, if you had to wrestle for an hour, for two hours, you could continue to do it and not get gassed out and not run your whole tank down. And that aspect was actually very akin to what jiu-jitsu was, where it was... A, you know, the old style a school of jiu-jitsu, the old school um, was being able to survive for a long time and take the match in the deep waters and eventually prevail. Now, what I like about catch wrestling so much is that um, you have even, in my opinion, even more po emphasis on positional dominance because uh, wrestling is the game of top dominance and getting on top and keeping the top position. And uh, I'm getting like way uh, off track probably from the original question because there's so many misunderstandings. But yeah, that's one of the reasons is that uh, a lot of people will interpret catch wrestling as well. It's, it's too hard and, and, and I can't do it or I can't implement it into my gym. And maybe that's something that Gilbert could talk about because Gilbert, he's got an awesome gym here in Arizona with like a great group of people to train with and he teaches it here um, every single week. And so he's been able to incorporate it right into his program and, and he's made it available to people that both want to compete competitively or they just want to come up as a, you know, more on the retail martial arts side and just train as, as a hobbyist. Like what, what would you say, Gilbert? Like how did you get this thing incorporated into your gym uh, but keep the authenticity? It, by going against the grain, man. Because uh, at least regionally here uh, in Arizona, uh, and definitely uh, in the last, since I've been in business, so I'd say like uh, the last six years that I've been really pushing catch wrestling here, um, a lot of the jiu-jitsu community uh, has the belief that catch wrestling doesn't work uh, um, because, of, because of its uh, roots. If, if somebody knows enough about catch wrestling to know that it has ties to pro wrestling, oh, it, it doesn't work, oh, it's fake, or as long as you can stay calm or tolerate a little bit of pain, you know, you're going to be fine. You know, oh, they're, they're just going to pin you and smother you and do nothing else. Well, I've made it my mission since uh, becoming like a full-time student and, and teacher of catch wrestling to, to, to prove the community wrong. And I've been able to do that um, really through competitions, whether it's um, taking out a squad of guys to these jujitsu specific tournaments and using that gray area as much as possible and utilizing as much catch wrestling technique in these tournaments. And, it, we, and instead of saying the shit doesn't work, what they say is, oh, it's dirty. Uh, it's all you guys are. You guys are bending the rules. You guys are, you know, you guys are wrestling in, you know, in a jiu-jitsu tournament. Well, fuck yeah, we are. Like we're gonna, we're beating you. It's your game, you know. And I'm saying that as a jiu-jitsu black belt too. And I have a lot of love and respect for, for the art that I've made my life. You know, I, I really am passionate about jiu-jitsu, but I also am quickly offended that so many people in the jiu-jitsu community would be so close-minded to other grappling arts, especially and in, in not trying to incorporate them into their systems you know like really what i try to do here is create a hybrid system and that's our, our unofficial model i teach them both catch wrestling or scientific wrestling and brazilian jiu-jitsu as separate arts but the philosophy in the academy is the ability to utilize whatever's going to work from either side and have the mentality of using one to set up the other using your scientific wrestling to set up your jiu-jitsu or using your jiu-jitsu to put yourself in a position to, to dominate with your with your scientific wrestling. So um, my success has been through like trying to prove the community wrong. And I've been able to do that again by getting people by, on a team side, winning a massive amount of trophies and just killing some of the top schools in Arizona. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I do it with a handful of guys usually um, by making top, top three medalists at the state level national level and the, at the world level and creating a, a handful of really good sub only competitors and more recently uh competitive catch wrestlers including myself which is kind of cool i'm getting kind of old for that shit too yeah i mean i think they both touched on a couple of really important things so you know one one of the reasons why is that um 
Uh, you know, that, it's like Tenth Planet has differentiated itself from jiu-jitsu as, as a whole as it's a sub-brand, right? And so people actually seek out Tenth Planet. Well, that's what we're trying to do also with scientific wrestling because, like Sam, when he first heard of catch wrestling, like, this shit's a joke. And some of the stuff that's marketed as catch wrestling is shitty. It is. Um, so it's important for us to be more specific about this brand and this top of the food chain approach that we've been trying to take and model with these like really high level guys and maintain the fidelity to the information and still innovate and still create. Um, that, that's one thing that's important for us to maintain is kind of this strong brand identity that's tied to quality control, right? Instead of like having this trashy association with the general, because it, it does actually have deep ties with pro wrestling. If you get into the weeds of the history you know, there were, before UFC in the United States, there was no real competitive venue for catch as catch can for scientific wrestlers. And so um, a lot of them got work as professional wrestlers where they could still do kind of what they loved and stay in the game a little bit, but they were, it wasn't competitive. So the real, one, that was a problem I saw early on when I was gonna tackle this is that I was like, well, there, there, this needs to be competitive. So we started King of Catch, and then recently we started Shoot Pro Wrestling. So King of Catch is an open tournament with rules devised by me and Carl Gotch. Um, and Shoot Pro Wrestling is more like of an in invitational, but that's more innovative. So I'm basically taking uh, competitive grappling and contesting it under professional wrestling rules. So we're kind of expanding past just singles, catches, catch can matches. Now we're moving into like tag team, uh, catches, catch can, pin and submit. Um, uh, what I call triple shoots, which like in WWE would be a triple th threat or in WCW would be like a triangle match. Doing those, but under competitive, <laughs> like actually having people go. And so that kind of novelty and, and freak show draws people into the sport. So we now have a platform to, for, from which people actually enjoy watching the sport as a spectator, like MMA. So I, you know, I think part of it too is that like, I don't know if catch wrestling will ever get gigantic in retail martial arts. In the same way that MMA probably won't get gigantic in retail martial arts. MMA is huge as a spectator sport, selling tickets, selling pay-per-views. I think that's why pro wrestling and catch are close because what I'm finding now by doing the shoe pro wrestling is that I've gotten incredible, just after doing the this show in July, the first show, I mean, it really had a lot of heat and we didn't really do any advertising, didn't have any names on the card that were big names to draw. It blew up and got a lot of attention. So that's part of it is that I think for 20 years, I've been trying to go that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu retail martial arts strip club, do uh, strip mall type of uh, dojo approach. Uh, but the strip mall is not a catch thing. It's more like how MMA is where not a lot of people really want to <laughs> get punched in the face for real, right? And not a lot of people really want to get cross-faced and things of that nature. So, you know, it's complicated. It's, it's, it's in a lot of ways, comparing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with scientific wrestling uh, approach to catch as catch can is, uh, is really apple oranges. It really is. And um, I have, like Gil and Sam, I don't have black belts like in Jiu-Jitsu. I'm pure catch as catch hand. Um, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because it was, Corey and Gracie, as a promoter, created the platform, UFC, and promoted the shit out of his style. And even though, statistically, wrestlers dominate, I don't see wrestler schools in every strip mall, right? So I'm trying to do the best I can with what I have, and that is blow this up by creating a nice platform uh, so people actually want to do scientific wrestling, if that makes any sense. So please uh, help us promote. <laughs>
can't rest camps with Jake and stuff like that, just check me out over there. And then Gil, what's yours? Uh, so Black uh, Flag Jiu-Jitsu Club. So Black Flag Jiu-Jitsu Club .com for the academy. Uh, Black Flag Jiu-Jitsu Club on Instagram uh, for the academy, and then for the uh, Arizona Catch Wrestling Championship, which we host here, which is sanctioned by King of Catch and Scientific Wrestling. I think that's uh, AZ dot Catch Wrestling on Instagram. And then finally for myself, uh, pretty simple, it's Jiu Jitsu and Things on Instagram. So that's it. And, and for Scientific Wrestling, just go to scientificwrestling.com um, or at Scientific Wrestling on Instagram, uh, either one and you can, you'll find us.